Well, well, I'm uh, excited to bring the word of God to us. Amen. Praise God. And if you got your Bibles once again, please uh, um, take them out and uh, uh, have your notebook as well. <laughs> Glory be to God and your pen. Hallelujah. So let's get into the word of God. Praise God. And I want to invite you uh, to uh, the book of John chapter 1. And we're going to read just one verse from there and that uh, to underline uh, uh, the, the message today. Praise God. Remember, we are doing a series, uh, a, a series if you want, on, uh, you know, I mean, we, 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 we're still uh, sharing on this, releasing the power of the greater one, which is right there on the screen, releasing the power of the greater one in us. That is our main uh, uh, theme. Uh, of the sharings, releasing the power of the greater one in us. And uh, today, I want to uh, talk about exercising that power. Amen. Glory be to God. Exercising that power. And that power is the uh, exhaustion power. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Praise good to God. You know, we have uh, been sharing uh, on this series uh, over... The, uh, the truth that um, God resides inside of us. Amen. And, and how does he do that? By his spirit whom Jesus, his son, asked of the father to send to us. And he came and he said he will be with us, but he will also be inside of us. Hallelujah. Remember when Jesus was with the disciples, he was with them. He was not inside of them. Hallelujah. And Jesus stepped that up and says, the one who's going to come after me, who will speak of me, he will not only be with you, but he will be inside of you. So that means it was an upgrade. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you see with the disciples, they had to be where Jesus was to be with him. But in our time now, glory be to God, I move with him. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I move with him. You move with him. Glory be to God. You know, so he's right with us here in the studio in City Family Church. And he's with each and every other believer all over the world at the same time. Glory be to God. And that's the reason why Jesus actually said, we are living in the time of advantage. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Compared to the time when the disciples were with Jesus. That's what he said to them. He says, it's to your advantage that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the comforter, the Holy Spirit will not come. But when he comes, hallelujah, this is what he's going to do. He will not only be with you, he will be inside of you. And we have looked at uh, some teachings, hallelujah, some that have just brought us off and, and, and uh, really encouraged us. And I want to encourage you, if you are listening to this uh, preaching for the first time, that you go to our website, hallelujah, www.cityfamilychurch.com, that is right there on the screen, and listen to the previous, uh, uh, you know, preachings on the power of God or the power of the greater one inside of us. So you can just connect through to what we're going to talk about today. Glory be to God. We talked about the fact that there's a difference with, with something just being outside or with you and something being inside of you. Because what's inside of us, particularly as Christians, our Christian life is the change inside of us, outside. Hallelujah. It's, in fact, it's what is inside of us that affects what is outside. That is the desire and the plan of God. That's why he comes to live inside of us. And then also we've looked at the fact that, you know, he is not just dormant. You know, he is potent. He's got power. He's, he's, he's an omnipotent God. And, and he's not only powerful, but he's also active. Glory be to God. So, so he's inside of us and he's working. Hallelujah. You know, to will and to good according to his power. That's inside of us. But you see, we've also seen that we are his vessel. Hallelujah. We are his vessel. He's gentle. Hallelujah. And he will only do that which we allow him to do. You know, but he's there, but he only do that which we allow him to do. That's why we are teaching this series, releasing that power. He's not only there just to stay there. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He's God, the heavens as well, and the throne where he can stay. But he's decided also to live inside of us. Hallelujah by his spirit. 
for the purpose that we live the life of God, his life on this earth. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Remember the Bible says we are partakers of his divine nature. So it is important that believers, Christians, we understand these things, not only understand, we begin to live them. So they are, they are practical in our lives. Glory be to God. We saw even last time that they will affect other people around us. The life of God inside us will affect other things around us. Glory be to God. Because we saw even last week that he is the resurrection life. He is the living power. Hallelujah. So that means there can't be anything that is dead or not living inside of us. And we also saw that because he is living, he has the power to impart life to other things. So our lives we will impart, will illuminate, will bring light to other things around us. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Powerful truths. Glory be to God. But we must learn how to release this power inside of us. We're carrying something so special that even Jesus himself said that the world cannot receive. Only you and I can receive because we know him. Hallelujah. The world doesn't know him. And that's what we are carrying. And therefore, let us release this special thing that we are carrying inside of us. Glory be to God. So the world can know that we are his disciples. Oh, hallelujah. I've just preached all the series that we've just done. Hallelujah. Before this one, in these just few minutes. But I just want to encourage you. Go to our website and listen and study through this. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So today, I just want to build on that and talk about this other aspect that will help us to release the power. Hallelujah. Of God inside us. And that is exercising the exhaustion power. Glory be to God. Now go to uh, John chapter 1 verse 10. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And I'll read this. Uh, in, in, in the King James Version. It says, And he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Why you have made doesn't know you. <laughs> he was in the world, and the world was made by him. He created the world, and the world he created did not know him. Hallelujah. Now, verse 11 says, Now he came unto his own. Within the world that did not know him, he came unto his own. And we know that this own is, is uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Jews, that, 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 uh, that race. And again, his own received him not. Oh, you know, two, two dimensions there. You know, he, he, he was in the world that he created. And the world didn't know him. You know? And then he came to his own. The Jewish road. And they received him not. You know that sounds like doom and groom. But no it is not. Let's read on. Verse 12. But. Somebody say but. I like whenever I see but in the word of God. I, I underline it. And I pay attention to what is coming after that. God is so good. Hallelujah. But. As many as, oh, underline that, underline that. You know, I, I'm, I'm reading this. Somebody may say, oh, you know, Apostle, why don't just read through these scriptures through and through from the, you know, there are only three verses there. So, oh, no, this is how I read my Bible when I'm studying it. I go line by line. I stop at everything. And I just underline it. I don't just write through. All right. So, verse 12 says, but as many as. Underline that. And see yourself among that number. As many as. Did what? Received him. Oh, glory to God. What happened to them? To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Oh, wonderful. Great. Even them... That believe on his name. Okay. Verse 18. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Remember the scripture, some of the scriptures that we've looked at, where Jesus says, but ye little children, ye are of God. But 
of God. Now, let me just, you know, go back to verse 12. But as many as received him. Now, the question is, have you received him? Have you received him? The answer is yes. Now, that word received him, it simply means if you've received him, you have made Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. You've made him your personal Savior. Now, what, what, what happens then to them that have received him? Now, I, I, I want you to understand one thing here. That the, 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 the next part of this verse is, To them gave he the power to become the sons of God. Okay? That has just been placed in the middle. But there is the next part. It's not just them that have received him. Okay? It's also them that have believed him. Okay? So if once you can read this as, As many as received him and believed him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, come on, shake yourself and say, uh, Okay, if you have somebody, you're watching this with somebody, just shake himself, look. It's not just about receiving him. It's about believing him as well. Amen. Glory be to God. Give them, a, give them an elbow. You know, I can't give anybody an elbow in the city. I'm on my own. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Come on, Sam. It's not just about receiving him. Don't just end there. Praise God. You've done well to receive him. But it's also them that believe him. Now, that word believe, you can check it out in your study. It is, uh, 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 in the Greek, it's the word faith. Faith, that means it's them that walk by faith as well. It's to these people that have believed, deceived him, made him their personal Lord and Savior, and also are ready to believe him in their daily walk with God, that become the sons of God, that receive the power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. And I like the King James for using the word the sons of God because other versions they use the children of God. Well, there is a difference between a child and the son. But it's but them that have received him and have believed in him, they walk by faith. They believe every word that he says. If he says you are more than a conqueror, they believe that word. If he says that, you know, by my stripes you are healed, they believe that word. If he says that, you know, uh, you, know uh, you are righteous, they believe that word. They walk by faith. So these people gave he the power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. And we have many people in the body of Christ that have only ended at believe, deceiving him. That's why we're teaching these things. They've ended at just deceiving him. Yeah, that's okay. That's great. You receive him and you become a child of God. Glory be to God and you, you know, you know we, we're going to heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. But you see, to them that he gives the power to become the sons of God are those also that believe him, that walk by faith. No matter what, they believe the word of God. They trust the word of God. They stand on the word of God. They are believing believers, not doubting believers. Hallelujah. So, so, so get these things into your spirit that I'm going to be one that has already received him. Glory be to God you have. But also who believes him. Praise be to God. Now, what happens to these people? The Bible says he gave you the power to become the sons of God. Now, I want us to uh, zero in now on this word power. Okay? Now, some other versions, okay, have used the word right. The NIV, for example, uh, the New Living uh, Translation, uh, that word power, they have used the word right. Okay? And that explains the Greek word exosia. Okay, exosia is the power, okay, or the right or the privilege to use the power of God. That's what the word, that word, and he gave he the power. That word power simply means, uh, you know, the right, the privilege, or the authority to do what? To use 
the power of God inside of us. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So now, here is the two things. So there are two powers here. Amen. Hallelujah. There are what? There are two powers. And I want you to get this right now. Two powers. The first power is the dunamis power that we've been talking about. That is the power of God himself that is inside of us. Dunamis power. It's a power that, you know, works uh, at we want to good every second when we, of our lives. It, 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 get, it gets us from point A to point B. Even when you are sleeping, the power of God is working. Hallelujah. It's God himself. That's the dunamis, dunamis power. That the power of the Holy Spirit who has indwelt us. Hallelujah. That's one power. Now, there is a second power, the exosia power. This exosia power is the right, the, the privilege, the authority to use the dunamis power inside of us. And when do we use it? Okay, according to the further uh, description of this exosia, we use it when needed against Satan's works. <laughs> Hallelujah. We use it when he needed against certain works. It's the authority. It's not something that we go about throwing about and say, oh, I have got exhaustion power. No, 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 no. It's we use it when needed and particularly against the works of the enemy that are trying to, to work against us. Whereby the dunamis power it's an ongoing power within us. It's the Holy Spirit. He's never on the break. He never slumbers. Hallelujah. He, 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 that's the very life of God. Hallelujah. But when we come up against things that are contrary to the life of God, we also have been given the exosia power, the right, the privilege, the authority to use the dunamis power against the works of the enemy that are trying to advance against us. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, amen. Hallelujah. I told, I told my people that's going to be a powerful way today. Of because this has encouraged me. Praise be to God. I want us to understand that right now. Remember, Jesus said to the disciples, okay, that the world cannot receive the dunamis power. They cannot receive the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the world does not know him. But you know him. And therefore you receive him. And when he was talking about that, he, was, he says, you know him. You've seen him. He was right before them. He says, you can see him. He's right here. But he's going to come in a different form. And he will be inside of you. So you can receive him. So you see, that's where the exhaustion comes in. Exhaustion is a right. It's a privilege. It's the authority that those who know the dunamis power can use the dunamis power. It's not everyone who has the right to use the dunamis power. Only believers. Come on. It's not everyone who has the right or who has the privilege or who has the authority to use the dunamis power. But only them that know the dunamis power. Only them that have received the dunamis power. That's why Jesus says, you remember the story of uh, uh, the one Sceva and, and his sons. The Jews who are trying to mimic Paul as he was performing miracles in, in, in Ephesus. Okay, maybe I don't have that scripture there. Maybe we can just read that uh, together in the book of Acts. Hallelujah. I will just read that uh, 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 very quickly. Uh, I think it's in Acts chapter uh, 19, uh, uh, we can start from verse um, uh, 11. If you want. And God was performing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. So that handkerchiefs, and I've got this scripture actually in my, uh, but not particularly everything. So that handkerchiefs or aprons were even carried from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them. And the evil spirits went out. But also some of the Jewish exorcists who went from place to place attempted 
Ede. <laughs> to name over those who had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, I adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. And seven sons of one scaver, a Jewish chief priest, were also doing this. Now what happened to them? And the evil spirit answered and said to them, I recognize Jesus and I know about Paul, but who are you? And the man in whom was the evil spirit ripped on them and subdued all of them and overpowered them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. <laughs> this is what happens to people who are trying to attempt to use the dunamis power when they don't have the right, they don't have the exhaustion to do that. Hallelujah. But you and I, we have the exhaustion. We have the right to use the dunamis power. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So right there, do not be intimidated. Do not be afraid. You have the right to use the dunamis power. Glory be to God. So two powers. The dunamis power and the exhaustion. Now let me just give some uh, uh, simple examples. It's like you have, uh, you, you have a car. You know, anybody can buy a car. Anybody can buy a car. We, we are having, uh, you know, discussions right now. Of our, our first son, you know, is you know, is 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 of age to to learn how to drive and you know and, and things like that, and he's telling us stories about his friends, you know, you know, you know that they're getting they're getting some small fiestas and and things like that. So he's eyeing our little car, <laughs> you know, these teenagers, <laughs> you know. So so you know, we we sat there a, a few days ago and said, look, the, the, the car is there, it's parked there, but you see, you've got first of all, you've got to learn to drive. Yeah, yeah, I will learn how to drive very quickly. I will do. I just said, yeah, I think you can. You will. So that will be the first step. You have to learn how to drive. Okay? Okay? But for him to have the right to drive that car, he must have a license to drive the car and also the insurance. He must be named on the insurance. With these things, he has a right to jump in that car and drive it. The car is there. But he just said he hasn't got the right yet. Once he gets that right, he can jump into that car and drive it. And it will take him wherever he wants. He can live in it if he wants. So it's the same thing. The dunamis power, brothers and sisters, is right inside of us. It's, it's like it's parked. It's a parked car. And this is a sad thing about many of the Christians. The dunamis power is literally parked on our drive inside of us. And yet we have the license. Jesus says in John chapter 1 verse, 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 verse 12 that he's given us the right. That right is the license. That's a license for you to use that dynamic power. So don't just let it be packed there. Use it. Get into it and it will get, it will get you from point A to point B to point C to point Z of our lives. Ah, Hallelujah. Another example I can give is that of the wheel. You know, for those of you that have written wheels, you know how wheels work. The wheel is there, and it will have somebody that is named on that wheel. Now, to claim what is in the wheel, two things have to happen. The first thing is, first of all, you must be named on that wheel. Secondly, also, that the person who wrote the wheel must be deceased. If these things are in place, then you can go to the underwriters, you can go to the, to the, to the lawyers who are holding that wheel and say, look, I've come here to, to make a claim on the wheel. And they'll say, okay, show us two things. Okay, you show us, uh, you know, we need to check, are you named on the wheel? He says, I'm, I'm, I'm very sure I'm named on it. And we'll check and say, yeah, you are named. But can you show us the death certificate of the person who wrote the wheel? And then you provide that. With these two things, you have the right to claim what is in that will. So you see, beloved, it is important, of course,
to have the dunamis power in us. Praise God, hallelujah, and it's so powerful. But without the right to exercise that power, the power is like a car parked on the drive. And today I'm here to encourage you that you and I have the right. Hallelujah, come on, tell yourself, say, I have the right. I have the power, the exosia power, the authority, the privilege to use the dunamis power. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And Jesus spent a lot of time explaining these things to, to the disciples because this is the will of God. He has come to endure us with his dunamis power, but he also has given us the right to use that power. Now, if we don't use the right, if we don't induce the right, if we don't uh, uh, demonstrate the right, if we don't exercise the right, the dynamic power will not be released. Hallelujah. Releasing the power of the greater one in us. Exercising the exosia power. Glory be to God. Now, go to uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 10, the scripture that we, we know very, very well. On what? What? One day, Jesus called together his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority. Now, I want us to understand that that power and authority, again, are two different things. Some, some, this particular version in King James uses two things, power and authority. And I checked that and realized that these numbers have got two different things. So there is the power and there is authority. But the second authority is the exhaustion. And that's why many other versions, they just focus on that. It says he gave them authority. Or they just say he gave them power. That is the right. What did he give them? He gave them the authority to use the power. Now, why would Jesus give them something if he, it's not intended to be used? So we see right here when Jesus was preparing the disciples and doing his ministry that the intention of God was that when the dunamis power comes upon us and inside of us, we learn that we also have the right to use that power. I tell you that you, you, you and I, uh, we, we are in, in City Family Church, great church, hallelujah, where we teach these things. But there are people out there in churches where they are so timid. Even from what is coming from the pulpits. They are so timid to use the authority that has been given to them. And that is the big problem. And the enemy, the enemy likes that. Because the exhaustion is the right to use the power. And the enemy knows he can't stand against the dunamis power. Once we use it, it's gone. And that's why he, he, he is doing all his best to keep, to keep people in ignorance. And Paul emphasized these things. That I don't want you to be ignorant concerning these things. Because that's what you know, gives the devil uh, uh, another day. And another day, the ignorance. Because once the dunamis power is called upon, he's finished. So all he can do is to keep as many as he can in ignorance. And one of the ignorances is this timidity, timidity to use the authority. And when a policeman goes out there, that's another example that I can give. When the policeman goes out and puts on their, 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 their uniform of authority, they don't feel timid to stop the cars. It doesn't matter who's in that car. It gives them the confidence because they know that the uniform they are wearing has given them the right, the privilege, the authority to do what they need to do. And once they are, they, 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 they've done that job, they take off those uniforms. So when they go home, they don't exercise that authority in that way. That's why the exhaustia, by definition, is the right to use the dunamis power when needed against the works of the devil. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So let's get back to this. So Jesus gave them this authority. Come on. Somebody said to yourself, Jesus has given me the authority. 
Jesus has given me the exosha power. Jesus has given me the right. What he has given you and I, we must use it. Hallelujah. And the scripture goes on to say, Then he sent them out to tell everyone about the kingdom. Okay, that, that authority to cast out the demons and to heal all the diseases. Okay? And, and, and see, this, this is what we need to understand. It's the authority to use the dunamis power, which is what actually casts out the, the demons and heals the sick and sets people free. Hallelujah. Remember what Jesus says when he came out of the wilderness? He says, the Spirit of God is upon me and he has anointed me to do these things. So it's the power of the Holy Spirit, the dunamis power in us, who works these things. But in order for him to do that, we must trigger him by using our right to use him to do these things. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. And then he goes on to talk about take nothing with you and, and, and so forth and so on. So we have this power, beloved, to, to inside of us, dwelling us, inside of us, but we must, we also have the exosha power. Now, very quickly, let me just give you an example about the disciples when they exercised both. Now, turn your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 3. I want you to see something here. Praise God. Acts chapter 3, starting from verse 1. Now, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon. And remember, this was just soon after they came from the upper room. Alright, when they came from upper room and they've been indwelt by dunamis power. Hallelujah. They've been indwelt by the Holy Spirit. This is when this incident happened. Okay, so where were they going? Okay, let's, let's read this. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. So they were going to the prayer meeting. As they approached the temple... A man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day, he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple each day. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, intently. Now I want you to mark that way. Intently. So to be intent means they, they are realizing they've got something inside of them. And Peter said, look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly expecting some money. Because he's managed to stop them. That's what the beggars do. If the beggar can manage to stop you, then he's got hope. Or she's got hope that the man receives something. So that's why this man was eager now, that he might receive some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. There we go again. So Peter and John, they knew what they had inside of them. Remember, they've just come from the upper room. They've been endowed with power. So they know that. And they've just had a great crusade just outside the upper room. They have Peter's preached with boldness, with the eleven standing with him. So they know what is inside of them. And they know it works. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So, so. And then what does it say? It says, I'll read this again. But I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the hand, right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. What a powerful, powerful testimony. Now, I want us to look at a few things. I know you've heard many, many messages about this scripture. 
and some probably some of them talk about the miracle itself hallelujah and they encourage us hallelujah we can perform miracles of course we can as well we can do these things that says we can do greater things we can do miracles we can walk into this but i want us to understand what peter and john understood because that is important first and for almost it is very clear that peter and john knew what was inside of them and that was the dunamis power they had come from the upper room endowed with the power of the Holy Spirit. So they had inside of them, I will give you what I have, Peter said. And what they had was inside of them. Now, that is the dunamis power. Now, where does the exhaustion power come in into this? We see now Peter and John, particularly Peter here, exercising the right to use that dunamis power inside of him. What does he do? He says he knows that Jesus did tell them that I've given you power, I've given you authority to exercise the power, the dunamis power. Hallelujah. So Peter says, well, we've just received the dunamis power. It's inside of us. So there it is now. Here is an opportunity. Here is the need for me, for the dunamis power to act. So, um, who am I going to call upon? He says, Jesus told us we have the right to use this power. So what does he do? He exercises that right. And how do, how do we do is it, see it in this scripture here? The Bible says, he then says, in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene. That is now going into the exhaustion power. Peter now is using the right, the privilege, the authority that he knows he has to use the name of Jesus, hallelujah, so he can induce the dunamis power to heal the lamb. And how does he do it? He actually reaches out his hand and touches this person and lifts him up. So we see now the combination of the dunamis and the exosia right there, hallelujah. And what comes out is a blessing to the lame man. Like many other apostles, like many other people that were going into that prayer meeting, they had the dunamis power, and most of them probably were even in the upper room. They had the dunamis power all the time, and they walked past that man every day. But up until Peter says, I'm going to use the right to induce this dunamis inside of me. And we see that combination of the dunamis and the exosia. Hallelujah. And this man got his healing and he went into the temple. Now there are some things I want to, us to see here. One of course I've explained that Peter and John knew the power of God was within them. That is very important. Please write that one down. They knew that the power of God was within them. Hallelujah. Because they had been endowed with that power. The dunamis power was within them. They also knew that they did not get more power by being in a prayer meeting. Hallelujah. Praise God. Had God let this miracle happen after the prayer meeting, today we would be having different messages preached about this. We'll be talking about go for prayer meeting, hallelujah. Go for overnight prayer meeting. Go and pray the whole night. And that's when we'll see the miracle. No. God interjected. God pressed upon Peter and John to speak to induce the dunamis power by using the right that they have before they went into the prayer meeting. So don't you accredit the prayer meeting for this miracle. No, 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 no. They could have been going home and the same miracle would have happened. Ah, come on somebody. Did you hear me? They could have been going home to their families and the same miracle would have happened all the same. Because it's not about where they were going to, it's about them knowing what was within them and also knowing that they had the right God to call upon that was within them. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, because many times uh, where we uh, let's go to the it's good to go to the prayer meeting, but you don't go to the prayer meeting to get power. Power is within us as we go into the prayer meeting. 
And we don't even get more power when we come at the prayer meeting. The power of God is the power of God. Dunamis is dunamis. That's the thing that we need to break away from, children of God. You know, you know, beloved, we need to break away from these things. Prayer meetings are great. Fasting is great. Hallelujah. We were taught by our Lord Jesus Christ to do these things. And he did them himself more than we even do them. So if he needed prayer that much, why shouldn't we pray? If he fasted, why shouldn't we fast? But we also, it's important to understand that Jesus did not say you get power from these things. He says, in our dispensation, the power is right inside of us. It's up to us to receive and to believe and to exercise it. Glory be to God. There it is. Before they went into the prayer meeting. Hallelujah. And look at that man. He enjoyed the prayer meeting. They didn't say to him, oh, hang on. Okay. Let's get into the prayer meeting. You know, just hang on here. Get into the prayer meeting. When you come out, then we're going to pray for you. But we've seen things like that. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just break these things. We, I break these misconceptions in the body of Christ right now. That the enemy has tried to, 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 to put cover over pure people endowed with your power. And, and, and they're deceived into thinking. The more they pray, that's how they're going to use that power. No, Father, in Jesus' name, I speak that that revelation come. To the renewed minds of your people. That we carry you. All the time. That which I have. Peter said. He didn't say that which I will have more. When I come out of the prayer meeting. That which I have right now. Glory be to God. And then he exercises the right. To induce that which he had inside of him. To heal that person. So the dunamis healed the lame man. But Peter had to exercise the right to call upon that. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Woo! <laughs> Praise be to God. You see, the other thing as well is that Peter and John did not petition God. They did not say, oh God, uh, come and, uh, you know, oh, this poor man, he's been here. You know, he comes here every day. They didn't do that. And this is the point, beloved. God has come to indwell us. And we keep asking him for power. Oh, we keep asking him for exhaustion. When he says, look, you are my righteousness. You have the right. And we keep thinking, behaving as if we are outsiders. We are his righteousness. We are his privileged ones. We have the right to his authority. Oh, glory be to God. In the name of Jesus. He says, whatever you ask in my name, I'll ask the Father to do it unto you. Exercising the right, we will release the dunamis. Come on, somebody say these words. Say, so exercising the right, we will release the dunamis. Exercising the right, the privilege, the authority to use the name of Jesus, we will release the dunamis. And the dunamis we will perform. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. They did not petition him. You see, theologically, yeah, we can see it in the word of God. And one of them is the scriptures that we've just, actually we've just used. Uh, uh, oh, this, this scripture is, is not saying, yes, it's there, the scripture. We use that scripture, First Timothy uh, chapter, chapter 2, when we are praying for the, uh, the royal family. We see in there that we are encouraged to pray. Okay? We are encouraged to pray. He says, I exhort uh, therefore that first of all, supplications which are petitions as well, prayers, intercessions, and giving all thanks be made for all men. But look at the context of if you read, this is where we are encouraged to pray and to petition God, to supplicate. But look at the context of what we are petitioning God for. It makes sense that we petition God for these kings who rule over us. Because he's the one who put them there. Because we want to have a peaceful life. And that we want these people also, if they don't know him, to become saved. So it's okay to petition God. It's okay to supplicate to him. It's okay to pray and to intercede. But I don't find anywhere in the word of God 
I don't find any word of God where we are encouraged to petition God for power that is already given us. Because if you're going to sit there and keep petitioning God where you are supposed to use the, the right, exercise the right, you're going to wait for a long time. And then you're going to develop all these kind of things that, oh, God does not listen. Oh, God is, is uh, you, know, you know, maybe helping other people. You know, I have heard all these kind of things. Oh, no, you know, and people come up with all sorts of things and scenarios and, you know, it's maybe it's a no and, uh, you know, maybe it's a wait. Uh, or maybe it's all these kind of things. <laughs> it could be a wait or it could be a no, it could be a yes. That's why it has not manifested yet. But a lot of time also is because we are petitioning God's power when God is saying, look, my power is already inside of you. I am inside of you and I've given you the right as well to use me. And we're waiting. Look, Peter did not petition God to heal that man. They knew the power to heal that lame man was inside of them. Oh, and they also realized that Jesus has told them that I've given you the right to use the power. Ah, hallelujah. You see, when I think about the ways of Jesus, that the world cannot receive him because they do not know him. But you can receive him because you know him. I'm thinking... We have what the world doesn't have. The very dunamis power of God inside of us. And then, and then I, I read the words where he says, he says, and those that have received me and believe me, I've also given the right to use this power. And that is us again, not the world. It just disturbs me. It disturbs me. It causes me to just roar and turn sometimes. You know, that's how I am sometimes. I get very disturbed with truth. Truth just disturbs me. I know I'm just meant like that, even just in my learning. When I don't understand something, even when I was a student, if I, don't, I just got disturbed about it. I go to my room, I begin to search, I begin, I get disturbed by truth. And when I see the truth, I take it literally as it is. These things, when I look at this, and I'm like, God, God, help us. Give us revelation like you gave to Peter and John and Paul, as we will see, that we have these things within us already. We shouldn't be petitioning you for power. When we come up against the enemy's works, we have the right to use the power that is already inside of us. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. Releasing the power of the greater one inside of us by exercising the right. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Here is another example of, of uh, uh, you know, uh, the apostles using their, uh, the power of God. This is in, uh, in Acts chapter 19. Verse 11, this is Apostle Paul himself. And God wrought many miracles by the hands of Paul. So from, and from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs and aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirit went out of them. Paul had this revelation. That's why he was handing out his, his handkerchief. Because he knew, he knew that, you know, we talked about, remember we talked about last week, the resurrection life of God inside of us. And that resurrection life is a living life. And, 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 and the living life is, is, is not just a life. It's something that is able to impart. It's a zao. It's able to impart life unto other things. Paul had this revelation. So he knew anything that has come out of me, it will carry that power. And that's why he did these things. And these are great demonstrations of the power of God. But I also like Paul's attitude which is there in, 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 in 1 Corinthians, and I want us to see there the, uh, the importance of exercising what we know. Okay? We, we see, yet Paul says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with the excellence of speech or wisdom. It's got nothing to do with that. 
Hallelujah. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ. And him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in, underline that word, demonstration or exercising of the spirit and of power. Right there is the exhaustion, the right to use the power of God inside of us. We must exercise it. We must demonstrate it. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Say these words to yourself and say, Come on, some exercise the dynamis. Come on, some demonstrate the dynamis. You have the right to do so. Paul did that. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That's all he did. Beloved, it's very clear. He says, I did not want to know anything about you. All I want to know is what is inside of me and that I have the right to demonstrate that power. That's it. And he went on to do those things. Glory be to God. So Paul knew what was meant to release the power of God. That was already inside of him. And it was by exercising it demonstrating it hallelujah come on i'm not saying go about and start looking for people that are sick or things that are not just rising up and begin to they will present yourself what i'm trying to say today is you and i have the right don't be timid don't be shy don't be coy we have the right to call upon the name of jesus christ and induce the dunamis to come up against the works of the enemy we're not going to fold our hands like we are destitute, like we are orphans. The Bible says we're not orphans. Hallelujah. We are, remember, we are sons of God. Praise God. And sons have the right. Glory be to God. Sons have the right. I mean, we, we are mourning Prince Philip right now, but Prince Philip was just a consort. He wasn't a king. His wife is the queen. You know, long live the queen. But when that day comes, when the queen has to depart, what's going to happen is we're going to see one son. <laughs> Out of the many children she has, we're going to see a son who have the right to claim the throne. Don't just be a child. We're not just children. In the family of God. We are sons and daughters. And we have been given the power. To use. The dunamis. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Ooh, so Paul knew. What he had. That's why he thought no. No intention. To tell me about this. Tell me about this. Paul never planted people within the, 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 the conference. Within the meeting. Spies and people to interview people. And pick up some stories. And then may, you know, pay them some money. So they can testify and say. Oh, but the miracle. It was nothing like that. He says I did not want to know anything. Hallelujah. Now let me testify right now. <laughs> Glory be to God. Let me give a testimony. What has just happened today in this service. For those of that would have missed it. I did not have any conversation whatsoever with Prophetess Jane. If you missed the prophetic word to Pastor Sanjeev. And Pastor Sanjeev, I don't know if you are in the service right now. But, you know, you know, or your wife is in the service right now. Well, I'll let you listen to this. If you're not, I'll send you a text message after this. That you listen to the prophetic that was given. I did not have any conversation whatsoever with Prophet Jane. Now, Pastor Sanjeev, if he listened to this prophetic word, he would have been laughing. Because last night, last night, Pastor Sanjeev and his wife called me. They sent me a text message and says, Apostle, we want to speak to you. Please, when you have a chance, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know please call us. 
and and yeah, <laughs> hallelujah. God is so powerful. God is so good. And uh, um, so when I finished, actually I was working on this message, and when I finished, I called them, and what they were telling me. Come on, Pastor Sanjeev, you must be jumping in your seat when you heard your prophetic word. What they were telling me is exactly what the prophetic word today from Prophet Sijen was to Pastor Sanjeev. Pastor Sanjeev was telling me about how God is moving in his life by his spirit. How God is separating him from certain things that have been trying to confuse him and take him away from what God wants him to do. He was so excited and his wife, as they were sharing these things to me. And he was telling me, Pastor Sam, Pastor Sam, how? Your, your daughter is moving in the Holy Spirit. She's filled in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we spoke for nearly an hour. And for me to come into the studio today, and hear Prophetess Jane release that prophetic word to Pastor Sanjeev, hallelujah, come on, give glory to God. This is our God. This is what Paul says, and when I came to you, I sought to know nothing among you except save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And only to demonstrate, to exercise the right to use the name of God. And that's what she did. She exercised the right to prophesy, to use the name of Jesus. She says, this is what the Lord is saying to you. That is exercising the right. You will be in a certain church as well. He says, that says the Lord. And they say, oh, shut up, shut up. Keep quiet, keep quiet. Who has said that? I've been in churches like that and I've been told to shut up. Because it says, who are you to say that says the Lord? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Prophet Jen, that must encourage you. <laughs> Glory be to God. This is God. This is God. Just so much right on the dot at the prophet. Just when she's saying, Pastor Sanjeev, Pastor Sanjeev, Pastor Sanjeev, are you there? I've got a word for you. I said, here we go. Hallelujah. And what started coming out? It's just we spoke and they were. They called me to say we want. They were so excited of the thing that we are spoken. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you see. Paul is not speaking out of arrogance. And this is it, children of God. We are not talking about arrogance here. We are not arrogant. No, we have the dunamis inside of us and we have the exhaustion to use the dunamis. People who don't understand these things, they will misjudge you. They will, they will, they will think you're arrogant. But you're not arrogant. And Paul spent time to explain that bit. Look at the composure of this man. Handkerchiefs hitting people. And yet, when you look at what he, the, the, his, just his persona, oh, Paul is a great man of God. How many people today who do the miracles, God would work the miracles that, you know, happened through the life of Paul and speak and say that I, I, I am nothing, I'm nobody. Of course we are nobody, and that's the truth. But we have somebody inside of us. And that's why we should make sure. And this is a message for you today. Don't allow the enemy to bring the spirit of timidity upon you. The Bible says we have not received the spirit of fear or timidity. But of power and a sound mind. He's the one that's inside of us. And many times the enemy is trying to cause the people to be timid from using the name of Jesus. From using the right to induce the dunamis. Exercising, demonstrating is the key. If we fold our hands, the dunamis will be like a car parked on the drive when it can take you everywhere. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! Glory be to God. So it's not about you, and this is what now Paul goes on to say. It's not about me. This is all about Christ. Who lives us in here? In I. Let me just conclude this very quickly. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ that who, who liveth inside of me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This is what Paul is saying. So you see, God is going to begin to use you so much. When you begin to exercise these things, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying these things. Thank, thank, thank you, coming, man. I'm saying these things. Because I know these things are not landing on dry ground. These things are landing 
on fatal ground. And I know God is going to begin to use you even more than the, the testimonies of my own life who is preaching these things to you. This is how God works. And, and, and I want you to know that the, the people who come up against you to try to make you think you are arrogant and things like that, don't, don't, don't pay attention to that. That's all just the gimmicks of the enemy. Don't allow that to stop you to, from using, exercising the exhaustion. Keep doing it. Because that is the key to releasing the dunamis inside us. Once the dunamis is released, the works of the devil have no chance. So the only thing the enemy can do is to try to stop you and I from exercising the trigger. From pulling that trigger. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it's not about you and I. It's about Christ who liveth in me. Hallelujah. That's what Paul says. Again, he says it in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20. Now, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power. Whose power? His power. That is at work where within me, all within us. Thank you, Paul, for including all of us in there. Hallelujah. He could have said within me. This man, Paul, hallelujah. How generous. How great a man is this. Man of God. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. That's what it's all about. So let people mock you. Let people say what they want. But you know that it's got nothing to do with you. All you are doing is you have received the liberation. Inside of you is the worker of miracles. And he's just waiting on you to, to trigger your right to use and he will perform. Hallelujah. Somebody say no pressure. <laughs> so no pressure come on somebody say no pressure no pressure hallelujah let me just share you one other little testimony it's not mine but this testimony of, of Ben I like Ben Hinn and everyone has blessed me a lot in my own growing up as you know as, as, as a Christian there was one time in, in my church you know maybe you've heard you know Papa say these things and they started calling me little you know you know you know Ben Hinn because when I got zapped in the Holy Spirit oh my 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 <laughs> Glory be to God. And, and, and in Japan, the students would call me fire brother. I said, you know, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. My name is Sam. <laughs> My name is Sam. Glory be to God. But you see, somebody said, no pressure. No pressure. It's got nothing. Paul has said it. It's not me. But Christ who liveth in me. It's according to his power that is at work within us. His power. Now here is a testimony I heard from. Uh, ben Hinn. A few years ago. This is after he's been in the ministry for a long time. This would have been maybe five years ago. So Ben Hinn, some of you would have probably understood that Ben Hinn suffered a heart problem. But God, thank God God healed him. But he had carried this heart problem for a long time. Despite God using him. You know, with all these healing miracles. He would go back to the hotel room and cry, God, when is my time going to come to heal me this? So he was always traveling with the medical doctors advising him, he was giving some some medication. But there was a time when he shared about the pressure he goes through in ministry. And that's it's important for somebody to understand this. Things. Please don't put pressure on your pastor. Pastors go through a lot. Pastoral work is tough. It's tougher than being a CEO of a thousand member company. All what CEOs do even the vice chancellor of a university employing thousands and thousands. My VC, my vice chancellor in my in Coventry University where I work, he doesn't think about what I go through. <laughs> All he's interested in is I should go in and deliver my work. And he goes to sleep. But you can be a pastor for just two people in the church. You carry everything they feel. You carry their emotions. If you don't answer their call, it bothers you. So Please understand. Oh, they don't even come me. They don't even. These are the pressures people going. So, Pastor Ben had been carrying this pressure. The pressure from what? The pressure from the very gift of healing that God has given him. He says, every time I am invited to one heal, let me tell you people, it puts a lot of pressure on me. Because sometimes I see when I'm in a hotel room, before I even walk into the room, I see on television that in that meeting there, there are so many people, I can see the, uh, the wheelchairs that are right in front. And those people have traveled 
to come and see their healing. It gives me pressure. This is what he said. He says, it puts a lot of pressure on my heart, on my mind. Up until, and he'd been doing this for many, many years. I mean, he said this testimony just like five years ago. Maybe you can Google it on and you might find it. So he's been through it. He's been through all this healing ministry. Then God spoke to him, he said. God spoke to me and said, Benny, why are you thinking like this? Why are you carrying all this pressure? It's not about you, you know that. It's about me. Who is at work inside of me? Now, Pastor Benny is a mature Christian who has read this testimony of Paul. He has read Galatians chapter, you know, chapter 2 verse 20. He has read Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20. He has read all that. And yet, the enemy, before he goes out to minister, wants to bring this pressure on him to make him think it's about him. And this is what ben, Pastor Benny's uh, ben Hinn's testimony was about, that the enemy wanted to put it on me all the time that it's about me. When it's not about me. And the Holy Spirit says, if I don't go, don't go. When I go, just follow me. So every time he walks out of his hotel room to go into the meeting, he says, Holy Spirit, these are your people. It's not about me. I'm on a vessel. Who knows I'm calling you inside me and I'm exercising the right that I have. Do it for your people. And Pastor Ben said, that encounter he had has set him free and he enjoys the gift more than any other time before that. Somebody say no pressure. You have inside of you. I have inside of me the dunamis. God himself. But all he is now wanting you and I to know also is that we have that right to use that dynamis. And that's where the struggle comes in. That's why the enemy tries to zero in and stop us from releasing that dynamis. Because that's where the timidity can come in. That's where the fear can come in. That's where the pressure can come in. No, 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 no. When you have the right, use it. If you don't use the right, you don't become the son of God. Remember, to as many as received him and believed him, only to those he gave the right to become sons of God. Exercising the right, the dunamis, will make you be a son of God. And there are benefits of being a son of God. In conclusion, hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. I have another example I want to give. This is another situation. And I'll be closing in a minute. I am I'm counseling a young man that I know in Africa. Because... They lost a very prominent member of their family. The breadwinner, the man who did everything, yeah, the big family. And he, he brought up so many other children that were not biologically his. Now this man died a couple of months ago. Now this young man, he was brought in, not necessarily adopted, but he was brought up by this man. He's, he's an orphan, his parents were friends to this man. So he brought up this young man. He's a, he's a man now. He's a grown-up man. He's even married. He's got family. So he's been brought up. So he grew up with everybody else like a child in that family. You could not tell the difference. In fact, the first time I met this family, I gave to know this family, I thought actually he, he, he introduced this young man as his, 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 his son. And uh, since he was the oldest over the other children, I thought actually that was his child. But of course, later on, I came to, he told me that you know, this child... He's, he's an orphan, you know, his parents were my friends, died and have brought him up and, and some other children that he brought up as well. Now, so this man grew up in that family think, feeling like everybody else because he was a child in that family. But now what has happened recently, and I was speaking to him only two days ago, on Friday, called me because he was distressed, he was crying, and he said, in his, I was cancelling him. Now, for the first time, he has realized that he was only a child in that family, but not a son. How has this come about? Because now I think the family is going through all the legalities of inheritance and things like that. All the meetings are going on, and he's just realized that legally, he's not being called to the table of these things. He has realized, after all these years, 
for the first time that he's different from the others. He grew up with them like everybody else as a child in the family. But now the law has exposed it that he is not a son. He has got no inheritance. He has no right unless this family in their own way, and I hope they will do that, but that's some things that I'm trying to pray with them about. They will be able to, they should, actually, they should. But the point I'm trying to say is, he has just realized that. It's the same thing with us. The reason why the Bible says to us, many have received him and believed him, he gave the power, the right to become the sons, is because there are advantages in being sons of God. Sons can use the power. Children don't. Sons can inherit what is of the father. Children don't. Children they will live in, they will benefit. But when it comes to sharing, the very authority, the power of the father is the sons and the daughters. But how do you become a son and a daughter? And here's a point I want you to take away. By exercising, demonstrating the right. Come on, let me repeat that. And how do you become a son and a daughter? It's by exercising and demonstrating that right. It sounds a little bit strange, but yes, that's what it is. So there are benefits in exercising that right. It gives you the power to become the son of God. Exercise the right. You also trigger and release the dunamis, but you also become the son of God. Hallelujah. Releasing the dunamis of the greater one inside of us. Exercising. Exercising. Demonstrating the power. And I like that word exercising. Because exercise simply means exercise. Come on, don't worry about the outcome. This is the pressure that Benin was talking about. And this is the pressure that Paul has gotten rid of. He says, it's not about me anymore. It's about the Christ who liveth in me. I'm just going to exercise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ray hands. Prophesy. Speak to things. Hallelujah. Just do it. Don't worry about the outcome. The outcome is God at work. That's for God. Exercise. I like that word exercise. Thank God that the Holy Spirit has used that word exercise. Demonstrate. How did Peter and John demonstrate? They did it physically. They, 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 they spoke it and they reached out their hand. Let's do the same thing. As we do it, we begin to release the dunamis inside of us. You and I, we have been given that right. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I will just um, read this other scripture. This is Zachariah. Hallelujah. Just go read the whole, read the whole scripture and you understand. The, 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 Zachariah was under pressure. You know, and this is what God says. So he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might nor by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Now, I, want, I encourage you to just read the whole chapter of verse 4. And you see the, 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 uh, the pressure that the Bible would have been under. But it's not about him. It's about the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not by power nor by might. Don't try to make it work. When you are a son, you are a son. Don't make it work. You are a son. Just use the right. Hallelujah. Don't wake it out. Don't crank it up. Don't go into the upper room to pray. Don't try to fast. In order for this power to be cranked up, you don't crank it up. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Thank God for these new cars today. I mean, all these cars you have, you can even start the car by just pressing a button and the car starts. There's no even ignition key. I'll tell you my... <laughs> I'll be closing there. My, 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 my dad, my dad, yes, my dad had a Land Rover. Those old Land Rovers, man, they were heavy. If it goes through the bush here, it will leave the path because everything, they were heavy, every Land Rovers. Every time we had to pack it on a, you know, the battery was flat. We would pack it on a bit of a, and then we put a brick there. So when you start it, you remove the brick and go, 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 it starts off. But sometimes you had to crank it, crank it, crank it. You know... <laughs> <laughs> I, I should end this. Children of God, hallelujah. Don't be a clanker. <laughs> Don't, is not inside of you to be clanked up. No, he is ever powerful and at work, even when you are sleeping. 
That's why sometimes this idea we Pentecostals and Charismatics, we go to wait for the present worship to sing two, three, four songs, hallelujah, for us to get to the point where we begin to raise our hands and then the Spirit of God is moving. No, He was already moving inside of you and that before you even left for church. We just want to worship in music. So don't put pressure on the present worship to crank you up. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> he is inside of us. God, do something. Amen. This is all we need to do to release the power of God. Exercise. Demonstrate. Use the right. Hallelujah. Oh, it's not by power nor by mind. And I'll just end up with these uh, scriptures here. Now, look, it's important to understand that the dunamis power is inside of us. But it's not automatic. And this is the whole point. It's not automatic. He will be inside us like a parked car. If we don't exercise the right to induce him. And this is what Paul is saying. And I've put those in different versions. The NIV says. says uh, to this end I strenuously contend with all the energy. Christ so powerfully works in me. What does he do? Paul. As anointed and all the results that we saw, miracles happened. But there is something that he always did. He had to work hard and very hard to seize the opportunity to demonstrate the power. Hallelujah. The, uh, the, the New Living Translation says, That's why I work and struggle so hard to do what? Depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. Now, if the Christ's might power is working inside us, why do we need to work so hard? He's simply saying, you've got to make that effort, like Peter and John did. They demonstrated it. The KJV says, Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We have to work. Come on, tell yourself, say, I have to work. I have to exercise. I have to demonstrate. Glory be to God. If you just sit on your sofa, even though you had macho muscles, I tell you those muscles are going to go one day. You've got to get out there and exercise in order for all the metabolism and everything that you are taking in to build those muscles. We have the power of God inside of us. Releasing that power, me, we need you and I to exercise another power, which is the exhaustion, the right the privilege, the authority to trigger the dunamis. Hallelujah. And only you and I, remember this, only you and I who has received and believed can do that. If we don't do it, the dunamis doesn't operate. Hallelujah. We need to know what Paul and the disciples of Jesus Christ knew and also do it exactly the same way. God has given to you and me the power to overcome every obstacle, everything that will come across our path. That's why we need the, we have the right. He has given you and me the power to overcome and to become a son of God. Hallelujah. What an awesome privilege. But do we know it? Today we know. Today we know. Praise God. Praise God. So be a son. Exercise the right. Exercise the exhaustion power to release the dunamis power. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Releasing the dunamis power inside of us by exercising the exhaustion power. The right to go upon the name of Jesus. So the dunamis can be in operation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray that you've been blessed today. Hallelujah. In this series, once again, of releasing the power of the Great One in us by triggering, by using, exercising, demonstrating the right we have to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That causes the dunamis to do the works of God, even against every evil work of Satan. In Jesus' name. Let me just pray for you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I give you praise and the glory. Thank you, Lord, for these revelations that you have brought to us by your Spirit. That we have the right as sons to use 
the dunamis inside of us. And so, Father, I pray for confidence. I pray for boldness. Hallelujah of you upon each and every one of your sons and daughters to realize their right and their position that only them can use the name of Jesus to induce your power to work not only within us but also externally over the things around us I give you praise and the glory in Jesus name Amen Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I pray that you've been blessed today once again and thank you for joining us and we look forward to being with you again in the studio next Sunday. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me just say this one thing. Uh, there will be a bit of a change in the time from next Sunday as long as we remain in this studio. Hallelujah. You know, there's a possibility as well that we might move from the studio back to uh, a place where we can have congregations. That might trigger again a change in time. But as long as we are in this studio, we are moving the service just half an hour earlier. So from next Sunday, it will be half past 10. Half past 10 uh, on Sunday, British Standard Time. Half past 10. So wherever you are, please take note of that. We will put this uh, uh, you know, notice on our Facebook and uh, uh, I suppose on our website as well. Uh, so that you know you'll be reminded so thank you for joining us once again may god bless you have a great week